Everyone hates Tesla. Ain't nothing new with that. Shout outs to everybody on obstacles to opportunity beyond batteries. Mega pack insight from a mega pack expert. Hey, shout outs to everybody. Thank you for watching the video. Like, share, subscribe, and enjoy the ride. Thumbs up and a like for the video in fair use. Let's go. A lot of questions about the Mega Pack, the Mega Factory going up in Lathrop, ramping as it is. And uh, for that matter, the new one that may be coming along in Shanghai any time now, certainly this year, we hope. So I have brought on uh, Bradford Ferguson from Rebellionaire, who is, as far as I can tell, the definitive resource on. Hey, hold on. First of all, that's a fly name, Rebillionaire. <laughs> that's pretty fly. I like that, Rebillionaire. Shout out to the expert at Rebillionaire. Go follow and like and subscribe to him. That's just a fly name. Now let's talk about the Mega Pack. I think the energy of Tesla is not spoken about a lot. Shout outs to all the commentators out there that talk a lot about the company in detail. Um. I think that they cover a lot about the stock and what's happening in the company also, but I just want to nail down and drill down on the services and the products at Tesla because a lot of people just don't understand the services, the products at Tesla, and the macroeconomics that go along with these technologies, these products and services. So I like highlighting that on everyone hates Tesla. Now, the haters, we can comment on them, but ah, forget about them. On all things mega pack. Uh, except for those who are bound by NDA. Uh, so uh, we'll talk about that. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. Bradford, how are you, my friend? Doing good. So uh, for those who don't know, Bradford has been uh, a cornerstone of the Tesla community for years now, um, offering a variety of support to a variety of creators. Um, I am a member of Rebellionaire, full disclosure. Uh, but that does not, uh, I've not accepted any sponsorship or anything like that. This is just a topic I wish to sell out. We can't trust them. No, <laughs> but for disclosure, got it covered. So this is going to be part one. We're going to do two parts. We're going to keep them both nice and tight. The first one, we're just going to talk, where are we at with mega packs? I know you've gone out to Lathrop a time or two. Tell us where we're at. So I, I got a little help. Someone looked in January and it's still kind of been stuck where it is like uh, 10 to 12 a day, um, which is about like 40 or so percent capacity. We think it can do about 25 per day if the capacity is 40 gigawatt hours um, per year out of Lathrop. So we're going to need them to pump that out a little bit faster. What's going on? Elon Musk, get them in, get them in shape. So the nameplate capacity, we're running at about less than half of, of what we're expecting them to get to. Right. Yep. Okay. And that's estimates based on looking at the outbound lot. Uh, looking at what comes out of the factory. So you have a method where you, you look at what's in the outbound lot and you look at a start time and then you see like how many mega packs they take away from the site over a, a period of time it could be like uh generally would like to do like seven days at a time and um so he's basically explaining like how are you measuring this how are you figuring this out he's just basically explaining that or taken out now now, you've been watching the news and you've seen uh, all kinds of announcements, but I don't think we're seeing all the announcements necessarily. Uh, can you share with us some of the announcements that we that we may have seen? Yeah, I would like to hear something. Seen or not seen. <laughs> well, both, both. Okay. Um, so Tesla says they're making a mega factory in Shanghai it, uh, that it, we think it's going to have at least 40 gigawatt hours of capacity. Uh, why, you know, why not 80? Um, Drew, um, Drew Baglino on the latest quarterly call said that Tesla was essentially taking Lathrop from 20 gigawatt hours of capacity to 40. And now Tesla came out two Octobers ago and said that the capacity of Lathrop was 40 gigawatt hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, not sure totally what's going on with that. Um, and then we heard the story where 
Tesla is getting equipment from CATL to make uh, LFP batteries in Nevada. Whether they're going to be making mega packs in Nevada, we don't know, but it sounds like they're going to be making some LFP batteries and not sure what they're going to use those for, whether it's mega pack or not. Um, then I have some some uh, news to catch people up. And so LFP, they might utilize those batteries, but we're not quite sure. I mean, those are batteries that they do use for a mega pack, but he still doesn't know for sure. So he's just speculating and saying, hey, look, we just don't know. And they're getting that from CATL. Shout outs to CATL. And let's let's continue. They they make great batteries. They've been making batteries for a very long time, decades. So up on some they may have heard before. Um, one of the more strange pieces of news was that Tesla at a industry conference, there was a, a lawyer that's involved in the financing of these a clean energy project. So wait, hold on. Stop that. That's important. Financing of clean energy products. What is he talking about? But before we go on to that, Shanghai building the factory. Yes. I hope they finish that construction because I think that the manufacturing capacity will just be top tier. Uh, China, even just the workers work very hard. The process for building the factory happens very quickly. The bureaucracy is not that red tape ish as places like Germany, Berlin. Oh my gosh. So we, we got protests and riots out there. It's ridiculous, right? Um, uh, I think we had like what uh, an attack on the facility, people out here walling, right? And these are environmentalist people. Look, I'm not so much about climate change or why I like Tesla's products, it's just an effective and efficient and new kick ass technology. That's it. That's it. It's better. It's doper. It's cleaner. It's smoother. That's it. It got nothing to do with albino snow monkeys and saving the pigeons and the penguins. Like, if that happens, okay. But net net is definitely about just a better, effective, and efficient product. That's it. That's it, guys. The next revolution. Like, it's the better technology. That's all. I'm with it because of that. Not because, oh man, we got to sell it, save the albino snow monkeys and our carbon emissions is 8.856 metric tons. Like, nah. It's just a, Better, smoother, cleaner, sleeky technology. I'm using Apple words. I'm using Trump words. Is big, big, and very, very, very good. You know, getting big solar farms put in, you know, when might or might not be added to it. And then you have the mega packs on site. And uh, Tesla is circulating a legal opinion that 95% of the mega pack uh qualifies as domestic content um which really surprised us when we heard it because um you think that a lot of lfp batteries are going in there and those are coming from china um so how does that work is is tesla using their own batteries and mega and mega pack are they using batteries made you know in nevada or whatever or um, are they including stuff besides the batteries. Um, so it made us question, okay, where, um, what's going on with 4680? Like what's happening with the batteries that are coming from China um, that are going into the Teslas and what's going on with 2170s? So it really uh, confused us quite a bit. Um, so he's kind of confused where the actual battery is coming from and what Tesla's making the claim about, hey, it's about 95%. U.S. built, U.S. manufactured, whatever the particular terminology is. I'm I'm not quite sure. I'm sure mm -hmm. if they're getting the batteries from CTL, um, how much does the battery count towards everything that accounts towards that metrics of how much is made in America or not? Now, you're thinking, yeah, it's a mega pack. No, it's a battery. Most of it's a battery. But there's so many other moving components and pieces, not just the batteries in itself. But all the cables, uh, where is it assembled? Where is it manufactured? Where is all the actual vendors from? If one vendor is from China, for even just a large portion of the product, which is just the batteries, is the metric based on the portionality, how much matter is put in towards the actual product, or is it towards like the totality 
of creating the said product because everything else besides the factory is possibly U.S. based. So at that point, it's like, hey, guys, we only get LFP from China. And then I said everything else, the whole factory is built. You know, we're repurposing factories that Sears used to utilize and we're making them into factories here. Everything else is done here. Just that one part. We just come in, insert it, bang, 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 bang. And then that's it. Everything else, everything else that was done was done in the U.S. So, yeah, I mean, it depends on how that works. The other piece of news that I would share is that uh, they seem to have, like, doubled some kind of capacity at Lathrop. You know, maybe maybe true capacity was 20 gigawatt hours. Um, the year before, Tesla blamed uh, a lack of ramp at Lathrop on a lack of batteries and a lack of power or electronics. You know, it maybe is that, but what I've seen is that inside Lathrop, they created a second door to pull them out of. So they had one door that's on the east side and it's, it's on the right side. <laughs> and, and then uh, another one on the left. And the, the one that uh, runs on the left has been open the whole time, but they added another one. And they began to like add a ramp system uh, so they could pull them out from that side. But our, our latest visit in January showed that they're not using that door. They're not pulling them out there. And in fact, they're using that little spot like as a little for, for supplies. Um, so we're not quite seeing um, a doubling of activity at Lathrop, unfortunately. And we saw in the latest quarterly results that uh, revenues on the energy side um, ticked down. So um, I'm kind of waiting to for mega. Yeah, so it's definitely ticked down. I get it. So there seems to be some slowdown, slowdown across the economy in general, but slowdown specifically for the batteries. So that does make sense. And that's very interesting. Uh, it would be nice for him to have better answers. Um, but, you know, he's limited in what he can observe and then what he can speculate on also. Get back to really get going. And I was on the, the camp of the more skeptical side when Tesla announced, you know, 40 gigawatt hours of capacity. Um, you know, people thought, well, because it's a, an easy product to make, um, allegedly, <laughs> that, you know, Tesla would just so suddenly start making 40 gigawatt hours out of nowhere. And, and that hasn't quite happened. Um, so the Mega Pack is a giant battery, but it's kind of like I would compare it to a server closet. Yeah, I don't know who thought that would be easy. I think scaling anything is not easy. It takes a while to build things out, to get things done correctly. There's a lot of moving pieces and moving parts. And creating a mega pack for a technology that's relatively new is also going to create problems when it comes down to your supply, your vendors, where are the products coming, and then also logistics. And so unless it's a you know product that you're creating that already has an infrastructure already has vendors and supplies for different elements and components of the product that you're going to make, then it's not going to be easy to climb up the hill. So whoever was saying that is a waste mine because it's just going to take time. This is a new technology, you know? Like, this ain't something that we always do. So we're creating batteries in the United States, and it's mega pack batteries. And so, therefore, you're going to have to build out a lot of moving pieces far beyond just putting things together inside the factory, but also being able to actually have everything set up when it comes down to the logistics, when it comes down to the administration, when it comes down to shipping. And so it, it, it's definitely a process that needs to be scaled, built out slowly. And then you also got to work out the errors in it. And I think, in my opinion, this factory, the mega factory is one of the first. So it would be like the initial factory in Fremont, right? like things needed to be acquired. And also this building was acquired and then recreated. So it was an old existing building for, I believe, Sears. And then it was repurposed to do what we're doing now, which is making mega pack batteries. So it's not even a factory that was built out specifically for the purpose of creating mega packs like gigafactories in Austin, Berlin, and Shanghai. These factories are at a very higher level of efficiency and productivity due to the fact that they were created with some afterthought 
and they were specifically created this time with the process and the manufacturing process in mind versus the Fremont factory, which it wasn't like that. It was created entirely different and they couldn't make a dramatic change like they could with a new build and create it for the purpose of creating that. So I think that people, if they just kind of like copy and paste and think that it's going to be easy for them to create mega packs and just go to 40 gigawatts, uh, they were, they were walling megawatts where, um, you're, you're dropping in these big batteries. So you're like, it's like dropping in the big computers and you're, you're hooking in the plumbing to keep it cool and the electrical to connect everything. So in, in a way it is simple that way, but it, it's a heavy product. Uh, these batteries are super heavy. So like people can't just lift these and put them in there. There's, there's machinery that they use for that. Um, and that's, and that's absolutely true. Well, I would argue. And that takes special machinery to uplift it. Then it takes people to also be brought up to speed on how to work with these products. Like it's, it takes a lot. Re educating people, building out the process, having special tools. Yeah, definitely. He makes a great point. Argue that a vehicle is vastly more complex with all the stamped elements, with all the, uh, and, and keeping everything as compact as possible. This is all right angles, but they are heavy, heavy pieces. It's not something, every component strikes me as the sort of thing that you would need assistance to lift with very few exceptions, maybe the access hatch. And when they're finished, the, the newest version is now significantly heavier than the previous one. Previous one, I think, could be fit on a regular truck with mm -hmm. regular 80,000 pound weight limits. And this new one uh, requires the special uh, extra wheel trailer. These are what, 83,000 pounds by themselves, something like that. They're yeah. quite they're quite heavy. Uh, how do they move them out of the building itself? What are they See, and that's very interesting, man. You got these mega packs, which are extremely heavy. And as he just described, even with the new one, since it's the additional 3,000 pounds, uh, you got to have a special truck now. So it's like, it's so much to think about. Man, I definitely won't, don't want to be in charge of such things because it's so complex. It doesn't seem as easy. And it's just amazing to learn about the process and everything that goes into it. And this is just scratching the surface. This is not even a deep dive. Um, I've also posted videos where we actually went through the factory and saw the end product or the product being built or assembled, uh, the car. And it's complex for sure. And managing that system, and we only saw the actual line. We didn't see what it took for even just the sheet metal to get to the factory. So it's, it's all an intense process they have a special they have these red painted devices they're called uh straddle loaders they're used at ports but these are modified for tesla's use and essentially they can lift them straight up and wheel them over and they can even go other they can go even go over other mega packs that are parked on the ground so you can literally pick one out of the grid pick it up and and move it over for whatever purpose, whether it's to load it onto a truck or or run other testing on it. Yeah, the, wow. um, and they they did triple the number of straddle loaders that they have on site. Um, and see, this is crazy. They even had to, you know, repurpose a straddle loader that was used as port for the purposes of their mega pack. So, what? There's so many things that need to be done. This is the first factory. So, yeah, definitely. I don't think it would be that easy. And whoever was, you know, getting super excited and thought it was just going to roll out like a Pillsbury dough biscuit, they were they were tripping their waistline for that one. Um, but it seems like they're still using two of them. So they went from two of these red straddle loaders to six. Um, but we were watching the activity of them and didn't see that quite pick up yet now uh in the comments the other day someone uh, uh, gave me credit they're like oh brian mega factory that's so clever and i had mm -hmm. to correct them no 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 for i have stolen that term uh i am as far as i can tell confident the person who coined that was you yeah is that true yeah i heard elon say mega mega factory or what was it Mega Pack Factory, and so I was like, Mega Factory, <laughs> right, right. 
And so I've, I've slipped that in a few times and people seem to appreciate it, but credit where credit's due. Uh, I get good analysis from all kinds of places, but if there's one thing I can't tolerate, it's a joke theme. So I will yeah. <laughs> always give credit there. Yeah, don't be stealing no jokes out here. I know y'all be stealing mad jokes out here on the internet. Uh, so, Lathrop? I, I, I will show, share one other piece of news. Sure. It, I think they're working on something like a power pack system where it's one eighth or one quarter the size of a mega pack. So if you're a hospital, I, I'm not sure that getting a mega pack necessarily makes the most sense. Um, you want to have a little more divisibility on, on the battery size you're getting and a, a power pack that's maybe a quarter or an eighth the size of a mega pack that might be compelling for some businesses as well. So we know these are using LFPs. Do we know if they're CATL or who makes the cells themselves? Yeah, it's CATL for now. Yep. Yep. And they are one one of the biggest. Uh, they have a very good reputation. And as far as I know, there are no scale LFP factories in the U.S. yet, though there are several underway. Uh, See, and that's that's exactly what I'm telling you. Uh, the The vendors, I mean... Yeah, it can't be 100% U.S. based because we just don't have them built out yet, the LFP factories. And yeah, we're behind on, on, on a lot of things, guys. Like, that's what I'm saying. People are like, jobs, jobs need to be created or jobs are leaving. And they're talking about some old obsolete jobs. I'm like, man, we got a lot of things we need to create out here. We got some onshoring, nearshoring that needs to be built out. We need some LFP factories. Elon Musk, for the longest, were, was asking people to create a lithium-ion refactory plant, but nobody wanted to do that, so we had to roll that out. And hopefully that's still making its prides and its strides in the correct direction. But I'm going to do a stream on that because the refinery plant, I need to check that out and see what's going on. And any news on what we can expect from Shanghai in terms of timeline? Do you even know where it is yet? Allegedly, they had some ceremony. They may have broken ground. I don't know if they're moving dirt. I, I honestly haven't looked at a drone video in China in a long time. So. Well, I have, and I've seen nothing. Yeah, nothing. I've read all the articles, and I've seen no mention of the actual location. I've studied all the pictures from the ceremony, and it's just a wall with, with you know, with a nondescript wall. It might so not theoretically, have been... they may not have to break ground or do a new site. Um, for Mega Factory Lathrop, they essentially took over, I believe, as a J.C. Penney warehouse, um, and it was um, under a million square feet warehouse in Lathrop. So they could just take over a warehouse in China and um, take it away from there. Right. It doesn't require the same kind of greenfield construction to embed the efficiencies needed where you're cranking out a million of something in $50 counts. Um, mm -hmm. And with these being as large as they are, as long as you've got sufficient spans between columns, uh, you may have to do some foundation work to shore it up a bit, but that should handle it. Uh, so, guys, next time we're going to. Yeah, I'm not quite showing sure that because none of you guys have built those facilities. So it's kind of hard to be able to dictate what they do and don't need it, or what's the better choice of building out the factory. I think, as I mentioned earlier, yes, it is not the car and the process is different, but it does require uh, a build up from the ground up because I think Tesla will be able to build it specifically for the purpose of that versus I have in some other facility in some warehouse, like, bro, what? Just create, dude, yeah, they could just buy some other Chinese place. And no, and especially too, there is no other place that's close to the factory of the current one in Shanghai. So what do you want to have it somewhere in an entirely different region? Like there's no freaking buildings around it. It's just Tesla. So you might as well keep it around your other factory and build upon it. Or as we said, build it out specifically for the mega pack. Um, and you don't know unless you're a part of the assembly line and building that out. You can't really tell why they would build it versus buying an existing building and kind of just 
filling in the blanks and converting that like they did for the J.C. Penney place. Allegedly, it's J.C. Penney, not Sears. But either way, I think that that's a little bit different. And you got to know more details. But I think if you know Tesla, then you know that they're going to want to build out their own facility that's going to be special um, for the process and assembly line of building out the mega pack. Because they already got issues now where they have to take these port, what did he call them, transporters, and then transform them, but use them for mega packs and da 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 da. You know, one bay was open and the other one wasn't. So let's just build out a new factory from the ground up. And then that would be 10 times better. Uh, so anyways, I think that was a very interesting video, right? I think that was good. And that allowed us to see what's going on on the other side. But net net, mega pack, still need, things need to be created. Maybe there will be a new product and a new service where it could service, you know, um, hospitals that don't require a mega pack. So that would be pretty interesting, a power pack. But shout outs to the Mega Pack Factory or the Mega Pactory. Good name. Good joke. Everyone hates Elon and everyone hates Tesla and everyone hates batteries and everyone hates progress. It's getting kind of ridiculous. Shout outs to everybody and much love. And the Mega Pack is going to be elite. Everyone hates Tesla because we, because we, because we, because we, because we winning, right? Because we winning. Because they winning. Because we winning. Because we winning. To the top with the mega pot, with the mega pack, with the packery. About the buffoonery.